Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Gretchen Heidel and uh, I am talking tonight in reference to Venus turning retrograde today in the sign of Aries. Oh wow. <laughs> so let's talk about what it means uh, to be retrograde in astrology. Astrology, uh, retrograde is a terminology used both in astronomy and in astrology. And probably, hello everybody, probably one of the most um, well-known retrograde cycles is actually Mercury retrograde. Most people have heard of Mercury retrograde. Retrograde means to that uh, from your eye, looking up into the sky, the old astronomers basically thought that the planet was going backwards. And so that was the, where the term comes from is retrograde. Now, we have learned that planets don't actually go backwards. What actually happens is we watch the orbit from, from our planet looking up, and basically it appears as if it's going backwards. So it's actually an optical illusion based on the orbiting cycle of the planet at that, at that time. That's the astronomy part of retrograde. What it means in astrology is it means that the planet is not exactly functioning as it is supposed to be, meaning that um, it's going backwards, so the planet is considered in astrology to be weakened, uh, the energy of the planet. Uh, so when we're looking at the energy of Venus, which is what we're going to be talking about tonight, and um, by the way, I love that everybody's joining, and feel free to type in any questions at the bottom there, um, because I'd love to hear from you. Uh, but basically what we're going to be talking about is Venus retrograde today. Um, it went retrograde uh, very, very early this morning. I think it was a 4.30 a.m., 4.08 a.m. Eastern time. So if you're on the West Coast, it was even earlier than that. Uh, but we're about to start a month-plus long uh, retrograde cycle in Venus. Venus is the goddess of love and beauty. In Roman mythology, she's Venus. In Greek mythology, she's Aphrodite, the goddess of love, beauty, art, creativity, sensuality. Okay, sensuality is very important. It's not necessarily sexuality, it's sensuality. Um, and living a sensuous lifestyle. Um, Venus is often where creativity is found, where our love of beauty or art is found. There are two actual astrological signs that share Venus. One is Libra and the other is Taurus. Uh, both both Taurus and Libra are Venus ruled signs. Okay, so you will definitely be feeling it if you're one of those two signs. And then currently v Venus is, is um, residing in the sign of Aries. And so if you're an Aries, you're going to be feeling that as well. But we'll all feel it in some way, shape or form. And so this is a review. Retrogrades are a review reevaluation, re, 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 okay? It's like looking back and saying, oh my goodness, what, you know, what is this about? A lot of people in Venus retrograde will be reevaluating their relationship. A lot of people in Venus retrograde will be evaluating what makes them happy in relationships. Uh, how do they experience love? That's a huge question. How do you experience love? Now, let me just go through uh, the energy of Aries because that's another really important component to this um, and hello everybody that that is joining you can always rewatch this afterwards at the beginning if you missed it so Aries is the sign of the warrior Aries is the sign of the self okay um, I am is the key phrase for Aries and it's about Aries often have, I'm an Aries myself, and the Aries people often have a journey of self-reliance. Uh, Aries tends to be a very independent sign, a sign that is associated with um, self-reliance, you know, figuring things out for the self, um, pioneering, you know, individualism. Um, so it's a it's a sign that you can hear is not necessarily a very partnership oriented sign although i know so many aries that love love and want to be loved and all that i think that's the human condition 
The opposite sign of Aries is Libra, which Libra, again, ruled by Venus, is a sign that's associated with partnership. So we're talking about the opposites here, you know, Libra being partnership, Aries being the self, okay? So that is the life lesson of an Aries. And when we have a sign in such a self-reliant, you know, uh, sign, and then Venus, Venus being in that sign, it's the planet of love, we're actually kind of, aren't we looking at self-love? What does it mean to um, be in love with you? And, and doesn't all love and love relationships come from the self? Now I wanna talk about that just for a second because really, if I wanted to get, let's say I had the intention of giving you a dollar. I really wanted to give you a dollar. But when I opened my wallet, the wallet was empty. I didn't have a dollar to give. And even if I had the intention to give it, I couldn't give it. And so that's kind of what love is like. If you love yourself 80%, then that's all you can give is 80% and no more. So when I talk to people about how they're loving you at their fullest capacity, that's what that means. So if their capacity is 100%, oh my goodness, how, how luscious and wonderful. If it's only 20%, you know, that's going to be really tough to be in a relationship with that person. And so it all comes to our basic foundation of how much do we love ourselves and how self-reliant are we. And also evaluating the relationships. Now this could be quite a selfish time, um, a little bit, because uh, we're looking a lot at self, self, self. You know, Aries is a self-focused sort of sign. So. Venus being in Aries is a little less um, giving. Uh, it's a little bit more selfish. That's okay. We're going to be doing this, by the way. It's retrograde until uh, April 15th, tax day. So we're going to be preparing our taxes during Venus retrograde. Secondarily, Venus does have the uh, undercurrent of finances associated with it, which is pretty interesting. I, I know of a life coach that actually kind of... Um, brought up an interesting idea in the fact of if your if your relationship like in other words your relationships are directly reflect reflective of how you operate with your finances <laughs> and that in some way your finances and relationships are sort of connected like if if you um, I don't know are, are sort of a stingy person and whatever you would might be that way with your love relationships that's what that life coach uh, was sort of talking about and I think that there's something to that, actually. Um, I think when our finances are a complete mess and then our love life, you know, might be a complete mess, you know, so it, there is a little correlation there. Uh, but Venus secondarily is, is definitely a sign that's associated somewhat with finances as well. So we have the major, you know, um, operation with love and then we have a secondary operation with finances. So again, we're gonna be kind of re-evaluating uh, those things and is it working for us um, are those things working fully are they you know how, how are we experiencing them um, is it something that you know we need to grow our bank account do we need to grow do we need to grow our love relationship and what blockages do we have in ourselves toward love and toward our finances and if we don't feel that we're worthy we're maybe not going to get that, right? So it's something to look at. I, I actually, you know, I have a lot of people that go, oh no, a retrograde, you know. Um, but, you know, retrogrades happen and, and it's a time for us to now just kind of look at that aspect and say, okay, well, what's that about? Have I really taken the time to really look at, you know, um, how I'm feeling and, and, you know, what kind of, have I been loving myself lately or am I kind of just moving through life and just sort of doing, you know, what I do with all of my subconscious patterns and different things? And am I getting the results that I'm looking for? That's all a retrograde cycle does. It's not a good time to start anything new. It's a re-evaluation. It's a reconsideration. It's a re-re-re, right? So it's actually, oddly enough, it's not a great time for sure to start a new relationship, 
but it's also not a great time to end a relationship. That sounds sort of interesting, but um, although plenty of relationships do end when we're, re when we're really looking at them with a microscope and we're kind of picking them apart, that can be a time where we're a little extra hard on we're looking with a like uh, hard on our partner. We're really looking with a much more critical eye. Now, what if you're single? What if we're not talking about a partnership? It's the time to turn off the dating app. <laughs> it's a time to just kind of move through life. We're going to concentrate on us. This is a me time, so we're going to be looking at, you know, what is our role? How loving and caring and giving are we? Oh my goodness, I love telling people, this is one of my favorite pieces of advice for single single people. Are you a really good girlfriend or are you a really good boyfriend? And if so, are you a good boyfriend or slash girlfriend to yourself? Do you date yourself? Do you have movie night with you? Do you have a uh, pedicure day with you? Do you have like things that you do with you? Um, and, and if that's the case, sometimes we think we're going to love somebody else, again, more than what we're going to love ourselves. And that just does not work in the long run. Um, and so that's really, really uh, one of those things that um, we really have to concentrate and focus on, on that quality of Venus retrograde. Now, Venus retrograde is going to make a couple of shifts. One of the big days of this retrograde cycle is going to be on March 18th. So you can remember that because it's going to be the day after St. Patty's Day. And Venus is going to form a conjunction with Mercury. Ooh, right? So Mercury and Venus are going to come together. That's kind of fun because now we're having lots of communication around that weekend. I think that's a Saturday if I remember correctly. Yes. So um, that's going to be, that weekend is going to be filled with talking, with, with learning, with reconnecting, partners, whatever. The other fun thing about retrogrades is that this often is a time, remember I said re, a lot of re, 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 reevaluating, reconnecting, re, whatever. Well, this is a good, this is a time where exes often come back, okay? Sorry. Uh, that could be good or bad, right? But um, a lot of times exes will try to reconnect. All of a sudden we get into that nostalgic feeling of, Oh, you know, or we'll try to reconnect with them. I mean, even if we're not trying, sometimes this is a time where you could run into an ex, let's say, at the grocery store or, you know, just out and about at a party and suddenly we run into them and it's like, oh, hi, you know. Um, that could be good. I mean, depending on the situation, obviously. But just remember that an ex is an ex oftentimes for a reason. And so before we jump back in, uh, you know, with both feet, we want to kind of uh, take a moment and again, we're reevaluating and rethinking about those love uh, situations. Let's make sure we're not putting um, our rose colored glasses on because boy, that really can happen during Venus retrograde cycle where we're not um, uh, seeing clear X's clearly, okay, especially on April, let's see. Uh, yeah, sorry, April 2nd, the day after April Fools. Um, and hello everybody that, that I'm getting notices that people are joining. Welcome. Please feel free to type any questions that you have at the bottom. Okay, so rose colored glasses. On April 2nd, the day after April Fools, Venus is going to go again backwards. So the sign before Aries is Pisces. And we want to talk about rose-colored glasses. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Pisces is a very dreamy, romantic, uh, creative uh, planet. It loves music and art and all those things. Uh, a lot of romantics are Pisces. And oh my goodness, Pisces is definitely a hopelessly romantic sign. T typically, depending on what other things are in a person's chart, of course. Um, but but straight up Pisces uh, sign is tends to be a very romantic, but I always say that um, they can have their Chanel rose colored glasses on, you know, I mean, really looking at, at our exes in the eyes of, oh, they were so wonderful and great and all those good times and we're like, delete, delete, delete the bad times. So, um, 
Venus being in Pisces during that time, that's going to continue all the way up until April 28th, but won't be retrograde the whole time. It's only going to be retrograde until tax day, April 15th, um, but we are going to have a re-evaluating now. Here's where we get into predictive astrology and we can have some, just a little bit of fun, okay, with this. Think back uh, to what you were doing in love and again, secondarily finances, in love and finances in January. What was going on then? And that's what Venus and Pisces, we're gonna have a re-evaluation of Venus and Pisces um, in the month of April. So if we look at April, it's gonna be like a repeat or re-evaluation or something is gonna be coming back up again of whatever happened in January of this year, 2017. So we're gonna have another little, like, you know, what's what was happening? Were you fighting with your ex? Were you fighting with your spouse? Or were you connecting with somebody new? And were you establishing something? Whatever it was, go back in that time and sort of think about, think about things. Um, okay, so I got a question here. Venus in my fourth house, home security. Um, yes, well, uh, Venus in fourth house, uh, so this is a great question, Penny, thank you. Uh, Venus, wherever Venus falls, and, and what Penny is talking about in an astrology chart, depending on how much of a novice you are with astrology, if you've ever seen an actual astrology chart, I don't have one with me, I should bring it next time, it'll be like show and tell, but it's like a round circle and it's got little pie slices. Those are called houses, and that really tells you where the energy of Venus is going to be focused in this in this department. Um, so Venus in the fourth house of home and family, for sure it's going to be, um, you would, you know, it would be maybe decorating and some things like that for sure. Um, you know, and boy, Aries, Aries is a fire sign, Pisces is a water sign. So remember, we can't skip over. We're, we're in Venus and Aries now, then we're going to go into Venus and Pisces. Aries is fire, so you might want to, uh, you know, for sure in Vermont we're having this super cold spell, so you might want to have fireplace, candles, you know, we have red, you know, Aries is a red color, um, Pisces is more blue, uh, aqua kind of color, um, Pisces is water, so having a water element in your in your house would be a really cool thing to do when, when it goes back, but although for you, Penny, it would probably be going into your third house, um, which is communication. So, you know, that's when you might be communicating um, and learning how to speak with loving words, okay? So, you're gonna have to kind of find a way to love your house right now, and that's, and, and incorporate more love into, into your home, home and family. Um, this could be a time when it's RE, so of course, uh, being retrograde penny in your area of home and family, you might struggle to find loving, you know, love in the home and family. There might be a little discord or strife and you're gonna have to figure out a way to stay in a state of love, uh, in a state of, of um, you know, being more of a mediator or, you know, sort of that sort of thing. So I hope that helps. Um, speaking of staying, staying in love, because Venus, is the sign of sensuality, okay, sen sensuousness. How much do we as Americans move through life in a sensuous way? Let's think about that. Um, when we're eating, for, for instance, like are we just, you know, and oh my God, I have another thing to do, or we're driving and we're kind of, you're welcome, Penny. We're driving and we're kind of, you know, just not even looking out the window and we're rushing to the next appointment. Aries is a rushing planet. We have three planets in Aries right now. We have Uranus, which, oh my goodness, that's been, this whole week has been a, a Uranus sort of week this past week that we had, um, which is very nervous and very, you know, shake, shake ups and, and that type of thing. Uranus, um, uh, I don't know if you guys heard, but, uh, Mount Etna in Italy blew her lid this week. Uh, Uranus is, 
shakeups and and you know just different things and and so that was quite interesting i had a feeling there was going to either be an earthquake or volcanic activity uranus is very shaky so aries is in uranus right now um uh uranus is in aries i should say uh venus is in aries and then we also have um uh, Mars and Aries, sorry. So so we have three planets in Aries. That we have a lot of Aries energy. So Aries is like head down. Aries tend to get a lot of neck uh, problems because we tend, when, if you think of a ram, okay, it bashes its head, right? Uh, Aries tends to go forward and, and really walk fast and, you know. So let's take a minute. Let's savor the flavors of our food. And, and look out and see the beautiful whatever it is. And even if we live in an inner city and there's not much nature and beauty in that way, maybe we see a really cute puppy or you know a child playing or some kind of thing. Um, you know, maybe we see a flock of birds or you know something that can remind us to look at beauty, to look at art, to appreciate the sensuous life that we have. We're humans, we only live, you know, once supposedly in this incarnation, we'll say. And so, you know, what are we doing? Let's just, let's just kind of take a moment and live that sensuous life and how can we take time for that? Um, how can we just slow down for just a second? It's hard to slow down with Mars and Aries. Again, this is a rushing, rushing, rushing forward planet. Um, and we don't want to slow down too much with Mars. That could be frustrating. That's a little bit like trying to trap a squirrel in a box, okay? Um, but we do want to take a moment and just kind of look out and and see out beyond ourselves and what makes us happy and and really how do we live in a sensuous way. <laughs> uh, Krista says she's worried that her baby will be born um, and will be an Aries boy. Well, Aries boys, you know, they can be fun. Um, I wouldn't be too worried about that, Krista. Um, even if, even if the sun sign is not compatible with you on paper. Uh, we have so many signs in our astrological chart. That's a little bit why um, reading your horoscope online or in the newspaper or something like that is only just your sun sign. It's only a little sliver of your life. Um, in other words, you could be, let's say the sign of cancer, but you could have a bunch of Gemini in your chart. And that would totally be um, compatible with Aries. So I wouldn't worry too much. You babies come when babies come and those astrological lessons and those astrological, um, things that the two of you will go through and your journey in life together, um, will be exactly what it's supposed to be. And, you know, perhaps, um, your Aries will be really compatible with you after all. So Russell Crowe is a, a very, um, Famous Aries boy, um, uh, fighting for the underdog, that's an Aries trait. So uh, your boy might be somebody that really helps to shape the world and to, um, and to really uh, make a difference. I always say actors and actresses often play roles that are very much like their astrological signs. So I think um, uh, Krista, uh, yeah, you said Scorpio. Oh, okay. I, I didn't realize. Okay. I didn't uh, scroll down there. So, oh my goodness, Aries and Scorpio. I, all my best friends actually are, are Scorpios. Believe it. You know, it's really, we're both combative signs for sure. Um, we're both warrior signs. We fight differently. <laughs> I always say Aries is like, Doo -doo -doo, I'm going to bomb your camp and I'm coming to get you and I'm calling you out. That's an Aries, very sort of more aggressive, but Scorpio is like, I'll bomb your camp at night while you're sleeping, you know, but it's okay. Um, if you're both warriors, if you respect one another, you guys are going to be totally tight and, and actually, uh, could be really a cool, um, that could be a cool relationship. So, um, anyway, I hope that, I hope that answers your question, Krista, about your, about your baby boy. Um, and so I'm just reading through some of the, uh, Rachel said Venus in the eighth house. Okay, so Venus is in the eighth house. 
Okay, so there's going to be a reconnection. Um, well, that's kind of fun. Um, eighth house is the house of sexuality. And so sensuality is going to be in the house of sexuality. So I'm a little jealous of you. <laughs> so that sounds like a fun combination. Um, so what makes you, what, you know, what lights your fire and what kind of turns you on? Um, that's all going to be things that are going to be reevaluated during that time. Um, and for sure, there's going to be also, eighth house is sort of complicated in the fact that it's not just sex for the, for the purpose of having sex. It's not like that animalistic, you know, thing. It's more about a, looking for that deeper soul connection. And if you haven't been feeling sensuous or sexual in reference to a deep soul connection, it's going to be a wanting to. Really, you're wanting something deeper in life. This is a deeper you know, go beneath the surface and really like think about how that makes you feel. Um, also too, eighth house is other people's finance, finances and assets. So during that time, uh, Rachel, you could be dealing with, you know, some sort of life insurance policy or cleaning out a house and estate sale, or I don't know, some kind of other people's assets. Um, and so that's the secondary, um, energy of of Venus being in your eighth house so I hope that helps um, and so Nora 11th house oh nice yes 11th house is reconnecting Venus in 11th is reconnecting with friends especially female friends um, and then yes 10th house could be your creative work and really what drives your creativity for sure you're, you're good Nora you you know you got your your knowing on um, and so, uh, Caitlin, um, you had, uh, you had actually posted, what about Aquarius? Um, I need to know a little bit more about, uh, you're welcome, Rachel. Um, Caitlin, I need to know a little bit more about your chart, which for sure, um, you can find out online or whatever, but I'd have to know where Aries is falling, uh, within your astrological. But I will say that Aries is at least compatible with uh, Aquarius. In fact, Aries and Aquarians are usually friends. So, um, which is probably why you and I got along. So hopefully that will, um, that will, uh, help you in the fact that at least you're not fighting that energy. That energy is not contentious. If you're, let's say a sign that's incompatible with Aries, like let's say it's, I don't know, Cancer or Virgo or something, you might have a little bit more of a contentious Venus retrograde versus somebody that has a lot of uh, planets that are compatible with Aries, okay? And that also makes a big difference as to how you experience that energy. So we're gonna be doing this review uh, of Venus retrograde and what that's like all throughout um, March and into April, April 15th, starting today, this morning. Uh, it went in and we will also in April we have a mercury retrograde coming okay so um, I can almost hear people going dun 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 you know <laughs> mercury retrograde that starts on April 9th for so for like a couple of hot minutes um, between April 9th and April 15th both mercury and Venus are going to be retrograde so then we're going to have at the very last week that could be stressful, I think. If you're waiting last minute to do taxes, I'm just gonna say, that could be really stressful because now we have the planet of communication and the planet of love, secondarily finances, both retrograde at the same time in the last week of tax season, April 9th to April 15th. So that could be a little bit stressful. So I, I wasn't intending on saying this, but perhaps the message of this podcast uh, Facebook thing is do your taxes. <laughs> do them earlier than April 15th and get them get them done because there could be like a very, with Mercury going retrograde, there could be a very um, scattered and you know, sort of like, oh my God, where did I put that paper and where's the town tax bill and all that type of stuff and you don't wanna wait um, and have that happen. Also, since things are RE, you know, you don't want to be audited, right? So I would think that that would be another thing that you would want to kind of avoid. So 
I would I would schedule your tax appointment earlier if you haven't already filed. Um, that's just a little tip from your local astrologer. <laughs> Um, so if anybody had any questions, uh, feel, for, feel free because I'm going to be logging off soon. One of the things to also, uh, I, I thought I brought it with me but I didn't, um, is uh, that you can use rose quartz. Uh, you know, anybody that knows me knows that I love my crystals and stones and different things. Rose quartz is love, self-love, okay, our feelings about love, and um, it's just a beautiful, it's said to be the blood of Christ, okay? Uh, rose quartz is protection. Uh, and wearing, it's, it's the stone that's, it's a type of quartz. I'm wearing quartz today, clear quartz, if you can see it. And I have my clear quartz um, earrings on. But rose quartz is the pink stone, okay? Pink uh, resonates, hi Tony. Uh, pink resonates with your heart chakra, okay? Sometimes we, you know, in life we carry with us uh, old heart wounds, you know, wounds that are sort of, you know, maybe coming from childhood, that message of I'm an unlovable or I'm, you know, in some way unacceptable or, you know, people, I don't know, don't love me or aren't nice to me and, and um, you know, those types of messages, if, if we got those in childhood, this is a great time to look at that and really do some self uh, care and self love. I would love um, to record uh, and, and air a heart meditation. Um, perhaps next time I'd like to prepare that for people because I really, yes, Nora, I agree. Great time to heal your heart. Um, again, retrogrades are not about causing strife and discord discord in life what it is is that it's here to heal something it's here to have us you know so if we feel unlovable and that's the program that we're walking through life with is i am unlovable oh my goodness you know this is a great time to look at that and say you know what um i was just listening to louise hay who is oh I love her. She's she's the goddess of, of affirmations. I think she turned 90 this year, so happy birthday, Louise Hay. Um, but her affirmation was, I am lovable because I'm here. And I deserve because I am here. And I am worthy because I am here. It's my birthright. And I loved that affirmation. I just thought it was the best. And when we take that, when we take that rose quartz, if we either wear rose quartz, um, um, if you don't want to wear it, it's a pink stone. So if you're, I don't know, if you're a guy, you might not want to wear it. I don't know. Um, it's okay. You can uh, make a grid and put one under your bed, um, or you could uh, put a little one of those little pocket stones, you know, in your pocket. Um, and so. Rose quartz is a great way to get in touch with that feeling of love and self-love and doing those affirmations. I want to talk just for one second because I'm wearing it right now. Um, this is a heart-shaped, so I'm talking about love today, so I thought I'd wear my heart-shaped uh, clear rose quartz. This quartz um, actually is, uh, I purchased from the Omega Institute in New York, um, where this summer I guess or whatever uh, was when I saw John of God and I received a healing from John of God I have actually um, worked with him and had several spiritual experiences with John of God and oh my goodness what an amazing time and an amazing experience but this is literally from the Casa in Brazil where John of God um, who is a spiritual healer works out of and so I'm wearing my John of God and these two are clear quartz. Now, clear quartz is an amplifier. So, people often ask me about clear quartz. I love clear quartz. It's hard to say. Um, I love the clarity, and I love um, I love it. But it's an amplifier. So, I am trying. I am. I'm currently talking to, and I'm. I'm literally channeling some of this information and just sort of having it available to me. That's why I wore the clear quartz because I really want to feel 
um, connected with all of you. It's a connection stone. It's great for group work and all those types of things, unless there's a lot of contention. If you know that there's gonna be a lot of tension or, or, or whatever, and it's gonna be um, energy, like let's say you're gonna see uh, somebody and you know that you have a tense relationship with them. I wouldn't wear clear quartz in that situation. I would use one of the darker grounding stones like my hematite um, stones that I that I wear. Um, those are more grounding stones. Clear quartz is an amplifier and an opener, which is great in this type of uh, setting. Um, but if you're in a setting where it might not be great, I wouldn't wear that stone because it could make it dip into a not so good thing. Uh, Nigel, okay, hi Nigel, by the way, how are you? Um, he had asked, um, he had asked about uh, doing a job search during this time. Retrograde times, um, I think, I think it's great to do a job search during during Venus retrograde. I, don't, I what I would say is that this is a good time to remember what you're worth. Remember, we just talked about uh, self worth. And this is a good time to keep in mind because Venus retrograde is going to be making us think about that. So when you're in your job search, this is a great time to think about what is your self worth? You know, are you settling or is the person offering you a mere pittance for what your training is, let's say. So that's a time where you're going to have Aries is a, is a sign of fighting. You're going to be a spiritual warrior, Nigel. So this is a time for sticking up for yourself and sticking up for what it is that you want. And it doesn't have to be in an adversarial way. It can just be in a way of, this is what I am worth. And this is, you know, if they offer you, let's say, you know, $10 an hour and you really felt 20, then this is a time to stick up for that and to really talk about, um, and talk about that and stay in your power okay so that's a really that's a really cool thing um, this side. um Krista you said if you're born early or late does that affect uh, what sign you should have been no uh, Krista we count in astrology we count the moment of birth and that's it I was actually Believe it or not, I was three weeks late being born. Um, I've been late ever since. People joke about that. That's, <laughs> uh, but I was definitely I'm I'm an Aries, but I'm on the cusp of Pisces, and I I definitely would have been a Pisces if I was born three weeks earlier. I have Pisces in my chart anyway, and so early or late doesn't matter. Astrology is the moment. The baby comes out that's when it's a soul and that's basically we're looking at even down to the time of birth um, so that's basically um, to answer that question um, oh Nora so your chiropractor I think you said went to John of God uh, at the Omega Institute um, I am in no way shape or form affiliated with the Omega Institute although I wouldn't mind being associated with them but John of God is coming back uh, next year. John of God said he would continue his healing work until he is no longer able to. So he comes to Omega in New York every year. Uh, it's a very large event uh, that you have to buy tickets for. And it's really amazing, amazing, amazing um, experience. So if you ever want to have more information about that, you can definitely Google the Omega Institute in New York. Um, Nigel, you also asked me in terms of expanding social life during this time. Um, this is actually not a good time to expand your social life uh, with uh, Venus in retrograde. This is a time where you want to just kind of reestablish maybe people that are already in your life and reconnect, reestablish, and not really co concentrate on any new associations forming. In fact, it is said that if you meet somebody during this time, if you're single and you meet, um, you meet a partner during this time, it's often a faded relationship, meaning it can be difficult. Um, faded or 
a lot of karma uh, that this might have been either uh, a past life it could have been like a past life relationship um, and so those sometimes while they're great for again learning oh my goodness sometimes we learn through um, adversity <laughs> and so if that's not your goal to learn through adversity right now I'm telling people turn off your dating app okay and maybe you know just sort of concentrate on you if you've been single for a while this is a good time to look look within if you're if you're in a partnership how do you renew that and you know I mean if you're married or if you've been in a partnership for a while this is about looking at how do you renew and how do you show up for that relationship I mean that's really really um, something that's very important is how do you show up uh, to your partnership during Venus retrograde um, retrogrades are interesting I always say the the energy kind of can go either way it can be contentious or it can be sometimes I've even seen where people normally have a really contentious relationship or a really like difficult very drama trauma relationship and then the retrograde comes and it's like oh they're so loving all of a sudden and this is great well just know that on April 15th that is going to change <laughs> or a little after um, that brings up a really good point retrogrades I always say retrogrades are like a car it doesn't go right I mean that doesn't it doesn't so when a planet goes backward it it's going forward and all of a sudden it slows down and then it switches and it goes backward but then it slows down again it's like a car you can't just slam it into reverse or slam it into acceleration it has a period of time so really this whole week to week and a half Venus has been slowing way down okay and just this morning at 4 o'clock in the morning Eastern time 408 I think I said it then switched but it's going very slow okay and then it's going back until April 15th which again it's gonna slow down then and then go back forward again so all that time of Aries to Pisces and then eventually on April 28th it'll go back into Aries again and we're gonna have to repeat all of that then it'll go into Taurus and Gemini and all the other signs so that'll be that's gonna be kind of interesting so we're having a repeat of uh, Aries too it'll go it'll go in Aries for a full second term <laughs> um, and so whatever happens during this retrograde it'll you know something else will kind of come out and and get repeated and I don't want to get too complicated about that um, hopefully I'm not losing anybody um, but basically we're going to be repeating again this is the first retro oh Shelly says the first retrograde I've liked hearing about oh that's so awesome that's great uh, I'm really glad uh, because that's and thank you Denise also uh, explaining retrogrades um, yeah this is love and self-love and I I like this subject for sure it's one of my favorite subjects um, because I think it's so love and self-love is a foundational energy I mean it's it's how do we how do we show up for people and how do we show up for ourselves and if we're giving too, sometimes the problem is we give too much. And so if that's the case, how do we kind of reel it back and go, okay, to center, bring it back to center. So uh, just to let you know, so from April 28th, okay, I'm looking at my little book here, until June 6th, we're going back into Aries again. And that's another thing. Now, one thing I didn't say is especially during that time the April to June time that's a time where where Venus will be going forward so that's the time that when we're meeting somebody new oh boy let's let's uh, let's do something fun like have an adventure because Aries is a very adventure oriented sign it's a sign about um, adventure and maybe some travel or definitely a sport um, if you meet you could meet somebody you know starting a new uh, I don't know like a rock climbing class or a hiking club or some kind of active Aries is very active it could even be Aries likes to fight for the underdog it's not like an Aquarius where Aquarius is so humanitarian but but it could be a cause that's a, a maybe a 
political thing or some kind of cause that you're fighting for, fighting for the underdog, that could be another way that you meet Aries. Aries is again an active sign. Could even be, you know, dancing or something, but some some kind of thing where where you're active and and if you're so that's how you would find somebody new, but if you're in already in a relationship, that's a great time to go out and have maybe take a camping trip or I don't know, whatever it is you do together, go play tennis or basketball or some kind of fun, active activity. Um, Aries likes to be active, and so that's that's definitely a good way between April and June. Plus, the weather's nice then too. That you could really um, Venus won't be retrograde at that point, and and so then you could move forward in your Aries, Venus Aries, you know, cycle, and that would be really you know kind of a fun thing. Um, Aries is also the spiritual warrior. Okay, so it could be a connection uh, with with that spiritual side and and so um, that's another thing uh, to to sort of connect with and to really um, up your spiritual practices um, and so it's not necessarily a sign that's exactly related to religion per se but it's definitely a spiritual warrior and, and a warrior type of energy if you're a type of person that doesn't really um, you know, you have trouble asserting yourself. Like, let's say you're actually, um, you know, have trouble standing up for yourself or you're maybe a little more passive. This Aries energy could help you, really help you. Now, if you're a person who tends to be really more aggressive and, you know, alpha person that moves through the world really aggressively, then this could make it even more so. So you want to make sure that you kind of don't go too crazy or too far with it. Anyway, um, uh... <laughs> Krista, oh God, I know I'm going to have an active ADD, ADHD Aries male baby. Well, yeah, you, you know, you if you have an Aries, it's always good to get them into sports and to get them moving and to get them active. They tend to be active little babies and active children. That's okay. You'll, you'll figure it out. Um, they don't always have ADD, by the way. They just, but they do have a lot of energy for sure. That is a very uh, active child that you, you would end up having. Taurus, by the way, you said early, um, Krista, so if your baby's born in Taurus, um, that's an uh, opposite of Scorpio. So there would be another thing of reconciliation, although that could end up being like yin and yang. You know, Scorpio and Taurus are opposites, so uh, if you have a baby that's a Taurus uh, male and you're a Scorpio female, that's a very yin and yang energy and that sort of fits together. So either way, you'll be fine, Krista. Don't worry, your baby will be good. Uh, anybody else that has questions? Because uh, otherwise I'm going to be signing off. And um, you can always repeat this. Um, you can start it over again, uh, you know, if you miss the beginning part of this recording. But really the mantra right now is to know and accept, love yourself, really focus on the loving giving part of it. Again, March 18th, we're gonna be focusing on a lot of talking, okay, around that time. And it could be talking to a loved one, a partner or something. Um, and then we have April 2nd, it's going back into Pisces, which I probably record another video by then, but will be dreamy and, you know, really romantic feeling. And then April 15th, it finally switches and goes direct and we'll get to you know be up and running again with all of the learning and knowledge that we have acquired since today. I hope that helps everybody. Uh, I love you. Practice your self-love. Practice your self-care. Be well. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. I do uh, private astrological consultations. I also do group readings. I do hypnosis. I do life coaching, Reiki, all different kinds of things. Um, so anyway, so please be well. And uh, remember, love yourself. That's where it starts. And then you can love others. Take care.